All right, I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's report. Um, got a lot of good pitching to go over this week, but uh, before I do, I want to talk a little bit about the weather. Uh, doing this video on Wednesday afternoon, Thursday and Friday looks fairly good everywhere. Um, Saturday and Sunday, though, you're going to have some weather at the Northern Channel Islands, Miguel Rosa, also out at San Nick. I would call those pretty much unfishable Saturday and Sunday. Uh, maybe the west end of Santa Cruz included in that, but uh, backside east end of Santa Cruz looks fine. Uh, Clemente looks fine. Santa Barbara Island, Catalina, all that, everything looks good. And the uh, the tuna grabs off San Diego look pretty uh, pretty nice as well, weather-wise, and everything else along the coast looks good. So uh, let's head out to the map and see what's happening. All right, starting up at the Channel Islands, the uh, sea bass are still biting pretty good for the Aloha Spirit, at least, and I'm sure there's other guys getting them but not reporting. I think they had uh, 16 sea bass, the 50 or 60 pounds on their trip uh, earlier this week. Also some big halibut, and uh, they're getting those on the flukes that they fish up there, the big white flukes. I'm not sure exactly who makes them, but uh, it's like a seven inch fluke looks like. Um, they're all skiing them on bait, they're getting them on jigs and stuff like that, dropper loops, but those, yeah, f that fluke sounds like the funnest way to fish them. Um, we're coming into the new moon, which should bode well for that bite up there. I don't know how the weather is going to affect the area that they're fishing up there, but uh, if they're out of the wind, they should be able to uh, fish right through the weekend. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how private boats would do up there on this bite. It seems like they drive around looking for sonar schools and fish those moving fish so if you guys are out there and on your own boat please give the sport boats a little bit of uh, space if you're fishing around them because all you gotta do is foul both you guys up if you uh, try and uh, get in on whatever action they're on especially with sea bass i know that for a fact you can sit right next to them and catch nothing you get yelled at by them probably but that's about it um still some good rock fishing up there uh i know with the weather Boats are probably going to be stuck at Santa Cruz or along the coast. Doesn't look too bad along the coast, so the boats out of Santa Barbara, I would imagine, will do that. They've been having lots of nice reds and link cod and stuff like that, just standard fare for up that way. Um, heading down, I'm going to skip uh, Nick and SBI just because the wind at Nick and the fact that SBI sucks, although you might get to sea bass or halibut there. Um, head down to Clemente. A few boats gave that a good look over the week. I know the Thunderbird was out there, and um, they caught some game fish, uh, calico bass, halibut, stuff like that, but it's mostly rockfish for the sport boats. I know I don't know the other boats that were out there, but I, saw, I remember seeing some reports earlier this week. I know that uh, I had some friends that headed out there on Saturday or Sunday last week and reported fairly slow fishing on the calico bass. They said there's a lot of those... Uh, by the wind sailors out there, that little jellyfish looking thing, and the uh, bass were all over those, but not all over the the raised swim baits. But uh, weather looks okay out there. If you're a bass guy, you can probably head out. Uh, or a guy looking to go over and fish cod, or maybe try and catch a halibut or yellowtail. I mean, that stuff's going to show up sooner or later, and you might as well uh, be the first one to find it rather than uh, wait until somebody else is getting them. I wouldn't really bother keeping an eye out too much for tuna in that zone if you're heading out, but you never know with the blue pens and they like that cold, dirty water. So, you know, if, if I was going to run to Clemente, I would definitely have a, a, a popper or a sub walker on the boat um, or going anywhere far for that matter. Um, head into Catalina. There were some sea bass caught there over the week. There's also halibut biting there for guys. Pardon me. My uh, mic thing came off. Um, you need squid to catch those fish. I know there's probably squid for sale at the island, usually in front of Avalon. I don't know who's going to be over there, but I wouldn't be surprised if one of those light boats out there selling squid. Haven't heard much on the bass. Uh, there's some bonita biting. I know they're getting some good cod, fishing deep. You know, 600 feet, stuff like that. Same thing at that 14-mile bank. Uh, I'm sure that 14-mile bank is quite a zoo. So uh, I'm going to let that whole hype calm down a bit before I plan any deep water cod trips around here. Plenty of spots to go. Just look on your chart. You can figure out magic depth range. It can be probably 480 to 600 feet of water. Just look for some areas out there that might have some hard bottom or something like that. You're not really going to see rocks necessarily. But if you see a big flat on your chart, you can probably go out there and mow the lawn with your fish finder and, uh, and find some schools of rockfish out there that nobody's been fishing. Um, 
so the fishing along the coast, I fished uh, Sunday and Monday this week. Um, Calico's a PV. The bite was okay. Not as good as it was last week, but uh, had some observations that uh, don't just apply to Calico bass. I thought I'd share them with you guys. Um, so we're getting, uh, we're experiencing water temp increases pretty dramatically here on the coast right now. So when I was out last Monday, it was 54 degrees. When I was out Sunday, it was 57 degrees. And when I was out Monday, I saw water above 61 degrees in areas. Well, that sounds miraculous almost. It's not. It's just surface temperature. Um, all of our fish on Monday came from very shallow water along the beach. And once you got into that water that was upwelled from the surf line, it was down in the mid-50s still. 56, 57 degree water. So that, uh, that warm water you're seeing is likely dirtier water, and uh, which warms up quickly, but it's, it's, uh, it's probably only six inches or eight inches deep is the, uh, is the warmer water. Um, something else I noticed that uh, above Rocky Point, there's almost no kelp up there anymore. If you guys are thinking about going up there to fish sea bass or calicos or whatever, that's uh, all that kelp got wiped out by those big storms we had. The area not only did not have any kelp, it had basically no fish, no bait, no nothing up there. It just looked like the desert. So uh, if you're thinking about heading up there, I'd wait, I, I wouldn't bother driving past the closure at the Vet Senny. It's a waste of time right now. Um, something else as far as the bass goes, and this is a bigger lesson than just calico bass fishing. You know, it, uh, over the th last three days that I fished PV, you know, over in a week basically, I was up there three times. And every time the fish bit, but every time the fish bit in completely different areas. When we had current running down the beach, we caught fish in, you know, 12 to 18 feet of water. They're in the kelp and they're feeding actively on leading edges in that shallower water. When I went back on Sunday, the current was going uphill and in and that really narrowed the band of biting fish down significantly to uh, a very short edge of the kelp bed. So uh, on the first day, we were able to make long grips through the kelp and pick off fish throughout. When we were there on Sunday, due to the current direction going 45 degree angle towards the beach, those fish were in very specific spots at the leading edge of that bed, but no further back. Now you go to Monday and the current is running straight into the beach. And we could not buy a bite in the kelp anywhere. Never even saw a fish in the kelp. We fished a lot of kelp over an hour or two, different depths, different everything. It wasn't until I found a spot along the beach that had waves breaking or turbulence, not actively stood up waves, but there was surge. And it was over a rock with no kelp in, let's say two to five feet of water was the bite zone. So you had to have the boat sitting in seven or eight feet of water just outside the surf zone casting the lures super shallow and we, it was, they would only bite hard bait. So we actually went there, got two shallow even fish and DD 100 properly. So Matt switched out to a striking square bill uh, crankbait and just lit them up on that thing. And um, after we caught fish at that first spot, we moved to other spots that looked the same, shallow rock, surge, no kelp, and every one of those spots was biting. So while that helped us, on Monday, I can guarantee if I went there tomorrow, it would be different again. But the lesson you guys should take from this is that our mentality as private boaters a lot of times, if we're on a bite or we hear about a bite that's happening and we go to that bite, let's say, hey, this on Saturday, I went out and caught a bunch of yellowtail at this spot of Catalina, or I caught a sea bass or a halibut here. Or the bass fishing was really good in this spot or the rock fishing was really good in that spot. And I go back there a couple days later and they're not biting. So the old me, when I was starting out, would say, oh, the fish aren't biting. And we've all been there. It's like, oh, I guess you know, should have been here yesterday. What's more likely is those fish are biting, but they're just not biting where they were anymore. So if they were at spot A and they're not biting at spot A, despite the conditions being as good or better, they're probably at spot B, C, or D. But if you don't immediately abandon your game plan and start trying different depths, different presentations, different types of structure, going from kelp to rock or going to all these other things, watching for birds, watching for these other things, you can figure it out. And um, it takes a while to figure it out. So 
Um, in this case, we probably spent an hour driving around a two mile stretch of kelp at Palos Verdes and trying every depth and lure combination that we were willing to fish. I'm not gonna drag a swim bait on the bottom. Different depths running hard baits, uh, different kelp configurations, different directions, different edges of the beds, inside, outside, look for birds, look for no birds, all these different things. And then we figured something out that they were in that shallow water and then we just sat there and picked that apart for another hour and a half, probably 25, 30 fish and uh, called it a day, you know, fished through all the good water and you know, we left the house at one and we're home by five in the afternoon, five, one in the afternoon, five in the afternoon. But that's, uh, that's pretty much what you need to do. You know, I, I see boats sitting there anchored up in really bad conditions. These guys, a lot of times, that I, these guys that don't look like they know what they're doing. They got nice boats, they got the right gear, but they're sitting in spots that I can drive by and see that the kelp's not going the right way, conditions are off, they're stirring straight out to sea, stuff like that. What the mistake those guys are doing is they're fishing yesterday's conditions. And whatever you fish for, it be a tuna, marlin, yellowtail, sea bass, any of that stuff, swordfish, rock cod, conditions are going to make a huge difference and you need to pay attention to what's happening today, not what happened yesterday. So don't be afraid if you know, if you're going to your alpha spot and it's not biting, don't be afraid to drive away and try something different. But that's, uh, I don't want to go on too much about that, but uh, let's head down to San Diego here and I'll wrap this up. Um, the Multi-day boats and day and a half boats are still catching bluefin down there and uh, most of it's still fairly far from San Diego but the fact that the uh, San Diego and I think the uh, Grande are both online tomorrow Thursday morning to go run daytime trips down there I think there's some fish biting that we haven't heard about yet. I think that maybe some of the skips or some of the guys that work on those boats took their own skips out and went check those zones out but I checked the fish count Thursday afternoon because I would much rather go on a full day trip than a day and a half trip and have to sleep in a bunk and all that other stuff. So um, hopefully those guys uh, get that stuff figured out. Other than that, you know, most of that fish has been nighttime fish, some daytime fish, but not a lot. I've heard of one private boater uh, that caught one trolling. Uh, a Mad Mac, I think, might have been, I'm sure it probably was. But uh, there's uh, some big bonita out there, stuff like that as well. But I think that, you know, last year when those big bonita were in the closer banks, those bluefin weren't too far away from it. That first trip I caught one last year, it was first thought we stopped on was all big bonita. Second spot we stopped on was all bluefin. So it'll be interesting, interesting to see what, uh, what transpires down there. But um, there's a mixed grade of fish, a lot of small ones, 20, 30 pounders, a few fish over 100 pounds being caught. Uh, at night, it's that same jigging tackle you were fishing last year during the day. Bring a fly line set up, bring like a cold sniper, something you can cast, a popper, whatever you like to fish. Uh, private boaters, if you're heading out, I would take a close look at the SST and chlorophyll charts. Should have a clear shot for a change here after we've had a sunny day here on Wednesday. And you're going to want to look for edges that relate to banks, be it a color break or a temperature break. That's where I would start looking if I were going. Uh, that's about it. I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend and I hope you get out and do some fishing and I'll see you next week.